Hello, welcome to the admin panel video. I'm Blair, a support engineer who will be walking you through the admin panel today. My testing instance, which I will use in this video, is currently running GitLab version 12.0.3-EE with a premium license. To get to the admin panel or area in GitLab, you must be logged in as a user with administrator permissions. If you are, you will see a wrench icon at the top on the top nav bar. Select this icon to navigate to the admin area. You can also type slash admin in the URL. The first page in the admin area is called the dashboard. The dashboard displays statistics and system information for your GitLab instance. Questions on licensing issues can benefit from the data in this first row, such as users and license, max, maximum users, and users over license. Additionally, the features and component sections can provide a quick check of a user's current setup. Working through the admin sidebar, the next page in the overview section is projects. By default, the most recently updated projects are listed first, but can be sorted differently and filtered by name, namespace, or visibility. You can also edit projects in this view, um, as well as delete them if you want to. The next page is users. The top tabs allow you to see all the active users, admin users, users with two-factor enabled or disabled, external users, blocked users, and users without projects. Selecting a user will display specific information on this user. This can be very helpful when troubleshooting user issues. Um, especially the identities tab, which is very helpful with working with authentication issues. Additionally, like projects, you can edit users and delete them. The next page is groups, where you can administer all the groups in your instance. You can change the sort order here, search by name, and of course, edit the groups as well as delete them. The jobs page lists all the jobs on your GitLab instance in descending order of job ID. It also links to the specific job, pipeline, project, and runner for that job. The runners page lists all of the registered runners for your instance. You can set up a shared runner for your instance using the information provided. And as always, you can edit the runners if needed, as well as remove them. The Giddily servers page lists all the Giddily servers for your GitLab instance. It displays the network address, Giddily version, and Git version for the GitLab servers and lets you know if it's up to date or not. The next admin section after overview is monitoring. On the first page, system info, various statistics are displayed, including number of CPUs, cores, memory usage, disk usage, and uptime. The next page is background jobs, which displays the Sidekick dashboard. Sidekick processes the background jobs for GitLab. The information in this dashboard is very helpful when troubleshooting issues with Sidekick. Sidekick queues can backup install and they can be identified with the Sidekick dashboard. You can see what processes, what queues are busy, what queues that you have, any that have been retried, any scheduled jobs, dead jobs, and also cron jobs and their frequency. 
The next page is logs, which displays the latest 2000 lines for the application log, git host log, production log, sidekick log, repo check, integrations log, Kubernetes log, and geolog. For more detailed logs that are easier to search, we recommend accessing the logs directly on the server, and they are normally located in the var log GitLab directory for Omnibus installations. The next page is the health check for readiness, liveness, and metrics checks, followed by the request profiles page, which is useful when troubleshooting slowness for a particular page in GitLab such as a merge request loading very slowly. The final page available to premium customers and above is the audit log, which lists changes made on the instance. The next admin section is messages, which allows you to create a broadcast message for the entire site. This can be helpful when uh, to communicate downtime or slowness that you may experience on the site. The system hooks section allows you to define system hooks and plugins for your GitLab instance. The application section lets you define system OAuth applications, which can be necessary when setting up some of the integrations with GitLab. The abuse report section lists all the abuse reports for the instance and allows you to resolve them. The license section displays details of your license, or if you don't have a license uploaded, it allows you to upload a license. This page is very helpful when troubleshooting an issue for a user with an unknown license level or potential license issues. The Kubernetes section allows you to add an instance Kubernetes cluster for use with auto DevOps. The push rules section allows you to define instance-wide push rules for projects. The geo section allows you to administer geo nodes if set up on your machine. And the deploy key section lists instance wide deploy keys. The service template section allows you to set default values for project services. Uh, for example, let's say you wanted to set up um, or connect all your projects to a JIRA instance, you can set the JIRA issue tracker template here and that will apply to all projects. The label section lists all labels for the instance. And the appearance section allows you to set a unique logo, favicon, system header and footer, sign in page, and new project pages for your instance. The last section settings is the largest of them all. I'll give a general overview and some helpful troubleshooting hints, but we recommend reading the documentation for a more detailed explanation of all these settings. The first subsection is general, and the first area in that is visibility and access controls. This area contains important settings for default branch and project creation protection. as well as default visibility for projects, snippets, and groups, as well as restricted visibility levels. You can set, uh, you can define import sources as well as overall LDAP settings for your instance and set uh, the Git access protocols. Uh, many of these settings are very important for troubleshooting, um, so it's good to know this area. The account and limit area, allows you to set size and duration limits for your instance. The diff limits area allows you to set the maximum diff patch size for the instance. The sign up restrictions contain settings for new user accounts that can be signed up. And the sign in restrictions contains settings for current user sign-in. And this is where you can require all users to set up two-factor authentication. The next area allows you to set a terms of service and privacy policy that users must accept. The next, uh, 
The next sections allow you to configure external authentication, the max session time for a web terminal, as well as the web ID. The second subsection is integration settings. This first area, Elasticsearch, is very important when troubleshooting client issues with Elasticsearch. And having this information can give you a lot more understanding of their Elasticsearch setup. So it's very important. The following sections um, or additional areas allow you to enable plant UML, uh, control the display of third party offers, as well as enable Snowplow integration. The third subsection is repository settings. They allow you to enable mirrors for your projects, configure your storage, your repository storage path, as well as enable Git checks and housekeeping for repositories. The template settings allow you to set a project as an instance-wide template, as well as set a group as an instance-wide custom project template source. The CI-CD section, or continuous integration and deployment section, allows, allows you to enable auto DevOps for all projects and configure various settings for your um, CI-CD jobs, such as maximum artifact size and whether um, you want to archive those jobs and for how long. The reporting settings um, allow you to enable recapture or akismet as well as configure um, IP limits. And the IP limits can uh, definitely help in troubleshooting some issues. You can also set up notifications for abuse reports as well as enable Sentry for error reporting and logging. The metrics and profiling settings allow you to enable and configure InfluxDB, Prometheus, the performance bar, as well as configure the version check and usage ping. In the network settings, you can configure writing to the authorized keys file. You can set limits for web and API requests. Again, this can definitely help with troubleshooting um, for any kind of IP rate uh, limits. And then you can also configure outbound requests. The geo settings allow you to uh, configure geo for your instance if you have it set up. And then the last section, preferences, you can configure your email settings, the help page, settings for GitLab pages on your instance. You can configure how frequently the GitLab UI pulls for updates. You can configure Gitalia timeouts, though uh, we don't advise adjusting these as it can cause slowness. Um, and then you can also configure uh, which day of the week you'd like to set as the first day of the week. Thanks so much for watching this video. I um, hope you were able to learn something. <laughs>